Hello everyone, I believe that I am streaming now. And because I believe it, it's a reality. Uh, today I'm going to be doing something a little different. Putting, taking a break from Scola um, because I'm wanting to get some more traction on the other hundred illustrations that I'm doing for the books. Um, and so I'm kind of breaking down and analyzing my workflow for how I'm generating all the sketches that I'm doing. Um, and part of that process is deciding from a value perspective, what, what am I trying to accomplish with, um, with the illustrations that I'm making? because there are many things you can do with an illustration. For example, you could show off how awesome you are at illustrating. Hi, Damon. Um, you can show in excruciating detail exactly how a thing works. Like, in this little illustration I've got here, I showed, hey, this is how this saddle, how a saddle slash stagecoach would fit on this very awkwardly shaped animal. Now this is not too excruciating. I could uh, have lots of little like close-ups, you know, I could, I could zoom in in areas and stuff like that if I wanted to get super detailed with it. So that's another, that's another option with illustrations. Um, uh, another thing that's very popular in the concept art scene nowadays is just like being very gestural and moody um, and pretty much ignoring questions about how greebles work how, you know, how this robot would hinge and bend, how this creature, uh, you know, how many hairs are on the creature's head. It's just like a brush stroke to give a gesture and movement and flow and color. Um, and so let's see. So far I've listed show how great you are, uh, show super detail, and show uh, mood. Uh, and I'm basically throwing all of those out the window and saying that is not actually what I'm trying to accomplish with the illustrations that I'm making. Dottie, Alita, hello, welcome. Uh, so, what am I trying to accomplish with these illustrations in these books? Um, I haven't articulated it out loud yet, so here's my first attempt at articulating it. Uh, I am trying to bring the reader slash viewer uh, closer to my vision for Talifar. So when you read a typical fantasy book, uh, there's one picture on the cover. You know, if you're lucky, maybe there'll be maybe there'll be some fan art out there. Um, or unless it, it's a book series that was turned into a TV show or a movie and then you have all sorts of extraneous stuff. But in my case, I don't have a TV show or a movie. Um, so when a reader is reading a fantasy novel and it describes a castle or a character or a creature or, or an outfit, uh, there's a lot of blanks that are filled in. And so, which is great, which is fine. I'm not against that in any way. Um, but because I'm hoping to bring Talifar into other mediums, other visual mediums, such as film slash TV, whatever that's going to be in the future, um, video games, graphic novels, whatever, um, the illustrations are very helpful in setting, uh, you know, once I have fans, once I have readers, <laughs> uh, setting their expectations for what they're going to see in the future, maybe priming the pump a little bit, getting them excited about, oh, this is, um, yeah, be because one thing that's often annoying in fandom is when a book is turned into a visual medium, you have a pretty large contingent of people who just hate it because everything is different than, than they had it set up in their mind. So, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't want that to happen. Um, so that, that's one thing I do want to do. I'm, I'm trying to bring readers 
uh, into the same visual world that I'm trying to create with the words that my, uh, my co-author and I are doing with words. I want to do with pictures. Um, and then the other thing is I am making gestures towards uh, what I what I hope better artists will take and run with in the future. When I can hire, when I can afford to have a team of artists, I can show them this sketch and be like, hey, here's, here's my basic idea. It fits all the words that were written in the book. Um, I think it captures something unique. Um, and so that should cut down on visual development time for all of those things, which I guess you could say they're assets. So in a film or TV show, if, if, they're, if you're building a prop or on the computer you're creating a creature, those are all assets that go into the film. So um, often a lot of pre-production uh, pre time is spent developing those things. And I feel like um, I'm setting stakes in the ground. Uh, these, these would be kind of visual and conceptual uh, stakes, saying, hey, creatures tend to look like this. Uh, you know, like, you'll notice there's no fairies, right? There's no flying little people with wings, because that's just not scientifically plausible. That's a stake that I've set in the ground, a conceptual stake. Uh, visually, I, I don't have um, women warriors in bikini chainmail. Again, that, that's both a conceptual and a visual stake that I'm setting in the ground. Damon says, I'm great and don't have to show that. Aw, thanks. Winky, winky. Um, anyway, yeah, so I think those are the two reasons that I am making all these illustrations. No, I'm sorry, there is a third. Uh, so, so one is bring, bring uh, readers into the same conceptual headspace that I'm in. Uh, prepare for future iterations of this work in visual medium. And then the third reason is to um, mm, surface problems with consistency. Like, because when you're working with a co-author, as I am, or when you've made a dozen novels, in the world as we have, uh, it gets awfully hard to track a lot of things. Something may have been mentioned offhand in one book and it, we're, we're actually working to try to have kind of a wiki that we can always reference, but that's, that's still in the works. Uh, when I'm sitting down and making specific drawings like this and I see there's a bedroll, there's going to be a water skin, there's a chest, there's a bag that has eggs in it. There's all these things that come up in the story and action happens, adventure happens, uh, upset and turmoil, and then maybe you come, maybe there's a description about it later and you're thinking, uh, thinking through the ramifications of that. Uh, a very specific example is there's a part in the second book where Beaumark and Scola are riding on this mulig, on this sort of platform carriage saddle thing, and um, they get attacked by this creature, and when they kill it, it shoots these poisonous uh, hairs everywhere. And some of those hairs hit Beaumark, and he gets all this, you know, like, swelling and allergic reaction, and others stick into a water skin. And so the water leaks out of that. Now, um, that's really interesting. A problem it surfaces is the next time he runs into places where he can supply up, he's gonna need to get a new container for water. Okay, that, that's a really stupid example, but it is a very clear example of what I'm talking about. The fact that, I, that I've drawn all this out brings that to mind. Um, whereas if you're just kind of writing the basic uh, arc of the plot and the characters, that sort of stuff tends to fall between the cracks. And there's no way we're going to catch everything between every crack. But 
it's still an attempt. The attempt is there, and drawing helps do that. Okay, so those are my three goals. Yay! I have my three values, and I've and I've eliminated three values. So what does that lead me with? What that leads me with is um, knowing the reasons that I'm making these illustrations, I can streamline the process of illustrating. What do I mean by that? I mean, the, the way I've been illustrating so far is I will sketch out, usually go through a couple revisions, lately more and more revisions, of, of an idea, a creature, an item, a character. Um, I'll take one and I'll just lavishly illustrate it, do the highlights, all this kind of stuff. Hi Dozer, welcome. Um, and I always kind of do it from scratch, just right on my sketch pad. Uh, then I photograph that or scan it into the computer, I put it in Photoshop, it goes through a process, blah, blah, blah. Eventually it gets put into the Word document that then gets turned into a PDF that then gets turned into an ebook and a print-on-demand book. Okay, so that's that's the pipeline that I have right now. Um, and that pipeline uh, is, it, it has some bottlenecks in it for me, which um, mostly revolve around uh, certain weaknesses that I have, such as perspective, uh, anatomy, there's just all sorts of things that I'm not at the pro level at, like, I'm good enough to get my basic ideas across, and that's fine, um, but there, it does reach a point where I just, if the anatomy and the and the perspective and the other things I'm weak at are so bad that it's actually um, embarrassment is one factor. That's not the main factor to me. To me, it's more uh, that it's distracting from what the image is supposed to communicate. If you're looking at an image and you see that it's so bad. Uh, and that is your emotional reaction to it, or at least it colors your emotional reaction to it, that's, that's getting in the way of communication. So, all that to say, I've been exploring ways to circumvent my weaknesses. Uh, and so one way to do that is, rather than drawing it from scratch on the paper, is to create it on the computer, hi Nasir, uh, in other ways. Uh, I am much more confident as a sculptor than I am as an illustrator. So it's more in my wheelhouse and I feel like I can quickly sketch out ideas that way. Here is a very malformed, uh, very unfinished version of this Mulig. Um, but my idea is basically I'm going to test this a couple other processes and software uh, to see if I can shortcut the illustration uh, time that it takes because I've got a trilogy to illustrate and get out this year. Um, Alisa, Alisa says stick figures is the way to go. That would be one way. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm trying to essentially Where's my move brush? I have my UI set up in such a way that I can't access everything. I was so proud. I, I grabbed my my UA, UI um, mode from work and brought it home. I was so happy to be working with my familiar uh, UI setup and it's going to take some more tweaking. Uh, anyway, yeah, so, so this is what I'm trying. I'm going to, I'm going to block in some models uh, in ZBrush, which I'm fairly comfortable with. Uh, and then I'm going to, I'm trying this new program called Daz Studio, which lets you pose mannequin like figures. Um, and then I think if I can render those out in kind of a black and white um, form 
then I can trace those onto paper and do all my agreeably little illustration work on them and uh, get all the um, perspective, lighting, all that kind of stuff uh, provided to me with software that does all that fun calculation for me. So I'm not going to get super detailed with this guy right now. I just want to get the basics of him in place just so I can see if this pipeline is going to work for me. It's just, it's, it's fine, it's fine. I will want to do all sorts of things to him later to make him not be so derpy, but being derpy is totally fine for now. Uh, what am I looking for now? Let me guess, I have to open ZBrush wider. Yes. Z plugin, Decimation Master. Process. So what I need to do is export this guy as a, in a format that can go into other programs, which would be an OBJ. A, a free program I believe it makes its money by uh, microtransactions they want you to buy um, character and clothing and, and item packs and stuff um, I, don't, I don't want to do anything right now I'm still testing this does it not remember me from last time I remember you you remember me? Okay. Can you tell Daz Studio that Will I'm the same person? <laughs> That's pretty good. I will remember you. Don't let Think of the password. Remember me? Automatically log in. I definitely clicked those last time. Success. Okay. So I um, already set up a placeholder bow mark. I'm going to be trying to do a a scene that's described in the second book. Um, one of the things I have found is that it's hard to pose these mannequins in uh, ways that don't look stiff and like a posed mannequin and I think it but I have also seen ones that are very fluid and natural so I think there must be a learning curve there and a, a natural skill level that um, if you got it uh, you'll be better at it so Hopefully I've got it. We'll see. Here we go. Right now it's very unnatural, but that's what I'm going to be working on. Uh, so I made this bow and arrow in Maya. It's just very easy to make these low poly props for him. really like to learn a camera setup that uh, 
allows me to rotate it around like in other programs instead of always having to move my cursor up to these little movement icons. So it's really obnoxious. Um, but yeah, so the, this guy basically works as um, Damon says, wow, that waterfall is so realistic. Such a great model. Thank you. You know, I worked hard on it. That says that's totally how I should shoot a bow. I agree. You should shoot it just like this. You should not even touch the uh, the arrow or the string. Uh, okay. So yeah, let's. So here's this little bone move tool, and you just you can grab stuff and move it around. All right. And I have yet to discover. Um, yeah, I'm just I'm just really clumsy in this right now, so you're kind of watching the learning process. All right, Aletha, since you have uh, since you have experience shooting bows and arrows, tell me, well, probably mostly shooting arrows from bows. Um, so I looked at some reference and I saw that. Uh, professionals always have their like elbows kind of up near their ears um, and they also usually have these fancy gloves that protect them but I don't think I want bow mark running around with glove things all the time uh, one thing that seems obvious to me is that you can't have much strength if your arms out here and you're pulling like away from like it probably needs to be pressed up close to the face uh, I keep using shortcuts from every other 3d uh, program to move my camera around and it keeps doing random annoying things okay so so to fix this problem I guess I'm gonna need to move this hand over here Grab that bow. Here says he looks more like poking with the arrow than shooting it. <laughs> uh, let me grab some reference real quick. That's proper form for short bow. Spend some more time on this later. Uh, I don't know if a compound bow is the same form as other bows. I don't trust this picture of a kid doing it. It's a Turkish bow, that's pretty close to the one I've got. Boy, that picture is tiny. But it does show again the hand is like right up against the cheek. The elbow is up high. I would love a top view. That'd be cool. Alifa says elbow up, arm straight. Where you have his arm that's pulling back looks right. I don't really know enough to give pointers on the exact form though. Yeah, that does seem to be the, the consistent thing. It's just a very straight line from the elbow through the arrow out the front. Ooh, 
That's cool. I think this is my favorite right here. Yeah, so the shoulders really need to be lined up properly as well. This here says, Josh, by the way, when I work, I used to jump a lot from photo to another looking for references. So I found this cool software that lets you collect all the references you're using on one board. Um, I think I've heard of that thing that you're talking about. What's it called? I mean, there's Pinterest, which is kind of an online version of that. Okay, so if I want to line up the shoulders, this one needs to go way back. And it is pinned right now. Now here's the tricky part is that it interpolates all the other parts along with it that you don't have pinned down. So... Uh, the nice thing that I've noticed is... Okay, put the pin there. Is that the, the rig on this guy really is good. Like, it's... It's really amazing how crazy you can get with these poses and yet they still stay um, like within reason of what a human body and skeleton and muscles could do. That is an art form in and of itself. Well, don't do that. So, he's supposed to be kneeling and shooting up and over the mulig. So, like, in this drawing, like, Bowmark would be here. Bowmark's, like, here. And he's aiming up. And there's going to be a scary monster over here. Rawr. Maybe I should just put this in the book. It's like a it's like a flying monster. So Omar's gonna shoot him. Mulig's uh, all afraid, so his ears are down over his eyes because his Mulig's are very are very. Um, cowardly, tame creatures. Uh, anyway, yeah, so that's that's kind of what I'm trying to line up here. This here says it's called Pure Ref. You just paste whatever reference you want on that board. All right, let's check out Pure Ref. I do not like paying for things when I've never used them. I would like to have a prompt, like after I've used it for a couple days, pop up, and then I can pay what I think it's actually worth. Let's see if it'll take zero. It will. Okay. All right. I'm uh, super happy to pay for uh, software that is created by, you know, passionate people who just do it for the love of it. I want to encourage that. I absolutely will pay for any program that I use regularly. However, I will not pay something for something that I have no idea if I will actually use. Okay, I'm wondering if maybe I need to like, let's see what happens if I pin this arm in place. Also, this weird controller you can use to do this kind of ball joint stuff. Uh, your download will begin shortly. 
Yeah, this would go a lot faster if I could just whip the camera around like I can in every other 3D package. I've got to, I'll have to do some research to see how to do that. Uh, let's see, so head needs to be lined up. Oh, oh. Oh, can it literally not bend that far? Hmm. I'm pretty confident I could turn my head straight down my arm like that. Let's see if I can rotate it. Just, just won't go any further that way. Huh. pose this guy or just that whatever it is about his current pose makes it impossible to, to do what I need to do. Where you at? Do you know the way? Pure F. Okay, when saving Pure F scenes, you can decide whether to embed local files or not. Embedding them will make the save file more portable, but it can also result in a very large file. Pasted images or images drag and drop from another program will always be embedded. Embedded local images. Cool. Sounds good. There's nothing here. Drop something. Okay. Uh, Nasser says, Josh, are the people on your world primitive? Like they're using primitive weapons. Well, they are um, all electric based technology is suppressed by the shepherds that put all the various aliens on that planet. Uh, to keep them from killing each other and nuking each other, etc., etc. Okay, can I literally drag from? Oh, can I literally drag from here. Come on, no, don't do that. Oh my gosh! Stay here. Don't. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Yeah. There we go. Look at this. This turned into... Oh, it has got that image on it. Uh, can I drag it move? Can. Very nice. Okay, let's grab this little guy. Stick him up here. Does that work? Nice. That is, um... Yeah, this is super cool. And then, how do I, how do I move this window around? Alright Nasser, help me out. I don't see any handles to grab and move. The, uh, the actual board out of my way. So I can just scooch it by moving one end, and then the other, and then the other. That is, that is not ideal. Let's get back to this. 
I need to figure out how to get his head to turn enough to look straight down his arm. Rotating on one axis, this axis, and it just it stops there. Let's see if I uh, if I unpin stuff. If that will help. Oh wait, is his head pin? Yeah, so at some point, the amount of fiddling that I have to do with the mannequin to get it to um, make my illustrating faster will, you know, if it takes longer to do this than it does to just make a bad drawing, uh, then I have, to, I have to abandon this. But there's also all sorts of tricks I'm going to learn in the software as I go. Like, surely there will be a way to move the camera quicker. I'll probably understand why some things that I don't understand are working the way they're working, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm just, I'm spending this, I, I'm investing this time right now to see if there's a faster way to do my illustrations is what it comes to. Nassier says it's meant to use on a spare monitor, not your main one. Oh, well, I don't have a spare monitor. I have a second monitor that I have to have my uh, YouTube and my OBS on. Uh, I guess I could get a third monitor. But man, that would be, would be quite a thing. Okay, let's see if I undo all of my pins. Nope. Nope. Where's this other one pin do? Something is pinned. Here? Yes. Okay. Now nothing is pinned. And still, that is as far as his neck goes. All right. I take back what I said about um, realistic limits on here. This, unless I'm missing something obvious. This is not the limit of a human's head ability to turn. All right, let me try something real quick. I'm gonna save this. And make a new one. Let's see, and I believe, if I recall correctly, I can go to Anatomy. Here we go. Figures. Two feet. Male. There we go. Mr. Male. And I can make a buffer, not buffer. Ridiculously buffer. Uh, etc. Et okay. But all I care about right now is seeing can he turn his head all the way to the side? Looks like he just can't. Yeah, it's just got a very stiff neck. It's frustrating. Let's see if um, other people have the same problem. Other stuff. I know there was other stuff. I saw other stuff in there. He needs a massage. Yeah, apparently. Check out the female. See if she can turn her head. 
Uh, nasty or no, the majestic goatee will never return. That was specifically done for an art project. Um, and that art project is over, therefore I do not need it anymore. still touch my chin to my shoulder, so I don't know why this super athletic CG model can't. I also don't know why I can't get to the other models that I definitely had a minute ago. Let's say file me. Don't save. Okay. So I went to anatomy. There were two things. There was something and then Genesis 8. I know. You guys saw it. Just doesn't want to exist anymore. Learning new software is always super fun. Super, super fun. Uh, content library. Categories. Let's take a here. External, I'm assuming external is stuck in other places. Uh, what is this? I have no idea. I'm just going to click it and see what happens. The change cannot come it's teeth and eyes. Okay. Not helpful. Only more from the break in me. The yes, here says he needs some milk. And then asks, is there race diversity in your world, like within the human race, not other creatures? Yeah, uh, there's five or six kind of uh, splinters of human that have split off from genetic manipulation before they got to Talifar. Um, so there's people, so they deliberately altered their physiology in such a way that they can exist very well in different uh, climate niches. So there's water-oriented people and cold mountain-oriented people and sunbelt people and then just kind of the default and then there's littles who are decided who just philosophically wanted to have a small footprint as possible so they're like half-size humans. What do we got? Animals. Creatures, huh? What is it? Ah, look at this. See? No, wait. Genesis 8 male. You don't want that. There's an actor. Let's try this. Alright. Hey, actor. Can you turn your head? No! Why? The first thing that I need is the thing that is apparently impossible. I wonder if there's a way to override the limits I have. Looks like I'll need to do some offline research before I can do good stuff. Who's my favorite character so far on the story? In the story. Uh, I think Scola is my favorite. He's such a great curmudgeon. Yeah, 
and uh, it's he, he has a very interesting interplay with Beaumark where their needs their large scale needs are in alignment but medium and small scale needs are very out of alignment so there's always a lot of tension uh, in that relationship which makes things you know tension is interesting apparently that's what I've learned in learning about writing and stuff yeah that's why my marriage is so boring because we don't fight um, I keep telling Heather we should fight more about our lack of fighting okay well let's just say that this is a permanent limitation of the software there's there's several other softwares po figure posing softwares I was looking at this one looked the most robust and professional to me. Um, open book. So worst case scenario, I can I can pose everything on him except have his head pointing in the right direction. And then you know what? I can just I can just draw it different. This is this is meant to be a guide, not a final like render. So I'm just gonna get it as close as I can get it, which apparently is there. Dottie says, "Are you trying to turn the head more to the side? Maybe once you have the head as far as you can get it, you can move the torso in the opposite direction." Um, yeah, I, I did try that, where I, so I took the head, pinned it in place, and then I tried to rotate the torso, but see, the head goes with it. Good thought, though. his shoulders and apparently you can't just click and drag on it you have to click to select it and then get like the pixel perfect tip of the arrow I, there have to be fast. I just don't need to watch some tutorials. There have to be faster ways to move this stuff around. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Come on. Nasir says there's a software called Poser. It's so popular. Yeah, I, I was uh, looking at Poser. Um, it actually costs a fair amount of money and uh, maybe it's just the art the artists that I've seen use it uh, it look the, the results that I've seen are even worse like super stiff and fake looking to me so um, and I, that could just be luck of the draw. I've, I've only looked at uh, artists who aren't particularly great uh, using it, so that is still an option to consider. Okay, you go. Okay. I want the elbow back. And up. Okay, this arrow is pointing 
in uh, knots in straight alignment. So you can rotate it a bit. So ideally his cheek is up here at the tip of the arrow, but we do not live in that ideal world. So much easier in every other 3D product I've ever used, except Zebra. No, it would even be easier in ZBrush because I can move the camera around easily in ZBrush. here says then I'll recommend Maya from Autodesk they have a monthly subscription like Adobe so you can use all their other softwares if you wish. Um, yeah I use Maya at work um, I don't think their monthly subscription is affordable for me personally uh, which is why I've been trying to learn blender but I mean every every package has its own dislikes weird annoying things about it object the pin turns green to let you know that it's obviously not holding it in place which is appropriate see I want to have that elbow stay in place but then move the tip of the wrist Yeah, the, the, also the problem with uh, Maya, Max, uh, and um, Blender, and ZBrush, all of those, let, they let you set up and rig a character, which is great, but the amount of work to get a character rigged up properly, and then the controls to move them around in those programs, is way harder than what I've seen in here. However, what I'm doing right now is obviously um, not super sleek. But this is also, I haven't even spent an hour in this program. So I can't, you know, level a judgment and say this program's terrible. I can just say I am terrible at this program right now. You know, maybe on hour two or three, uh, it, you know, something's going to click, and I'll realize, oh, I could have just been doing this the whole time. Um, I 
have on Spike P, or can I just rotate Mr. Hand in such a way that will make sense? Let's see, he's actually doing kind of a. He's pinching between his thumb and forefinger, but I've also seen it held between um, other fingers. Um, I'll go ahead and try to do what this reference is doing. Why not? Damon says, you should be a master at it as soon as it loads, obviously. Yeah, I wish. Probably because the forearm is twisted. That's no, not that one. Ah, okay, yeah. See, this actually makes sense because you've got your two forearm bones that kind of cross each other like an X. They cross and uncross, and that's how you twist your wrist. So. That totally makes sense to me that I need to twist the hand by doing that. Uh, looks like that, that must be the elbow bent as much as possible. No, this is the elbow one. Okay. Selected. Okay, this one has a little bit of a twist to it. Excellent. Up and down. Nice. Yes, here says Josh. I know this is random, but I'm fascinated by the human hands. How they move and look is really interesting, mainly while trying to illustrate them. Yeah, they are fascinating and complicated. Yeah, this one has that split between the first and second finger. But, um, the one I was referencing, uh, I probably passed it 30 times, but now I can't find it. But anyway, he's holding it, pinching it between finger and thumb. So that's what I'm trying to do. Um, and looks like hmm. 
you know, that obviously uh, the line needs to travel through the arrow, down the hand, to the elbow. Boy, am I having a hard time getting this to line up. I could move this hand. So the elbow needs to be there. Let's pin it. Can I then move this? No. Can I use my rotators to get it up there? Not that one. Something is keeping it from rotating up that way. Alita says, maybe look up Mediterranean draw or thumb draw. Maybe it will show you closer, a closer look at the hands. Nasser says, by the way, Josh, while I was working on a clay project, I was discussing the fact that my experience with molding the clay felt so spiritual somehow. Do you feel the same way yourself? Um, I definitely feel exhilaration and joy when I am, when something that I'm working towards is, I'm starting to see it go the, the direction that I want. Depending on your definition of spiritual, that, that could be that. I wonder if maybe this shoulder is just up too high. Oh, man. Move the rest of his body into unknown weirdness, but it's all right, I think. fairly closer to his cheek though it may be harder to do since his head won't turn how it should yeah I think I'll probably put his hand pretty much through his cheek if I can and then fix the resulting problems in, um, in the final drawing okay well now at least I'm getting a similar angle to that arrow arrow through to the elbow. It's not quite there yet, but it's close. Oh, there we go. Yeah, ideally, I'd want the elbow back further, but man, it seems like I can get it right on one angle, but not on multiple angles at the same time. Let's see what... Back. Okay, let's try this one. This was so much faster and easier in my imagination. I thought I thought I would have this pose down in like two minutes, and I'd be on to the uh, you know compositing them into a scene with the Mulig at this point. So many thoughts. Nasir says I'm 
asking because your point of view on things is very interesting. I'm always fascinated when I hear your opinions on things. Were you always that wise or just manifested by time? Well, I guess if you think I'm wise now, uh, certainly by comparison to how I was when I was younger, uh, yes, absolutely age had a lot to do with it. Experience had a lot to do with it. Um, living in ways that I thought would give me certain results and finding that those results did not happen and then modifying the way I was living. Um, so that's kind of like a laboratory um, approach <laughs> to like a scientific experimentation approach to life. Um, it's probably what makes me however I am however you describe what I am. I would agree with you that I'm wise, but if I did that, it would negate my wisdom because a huge part of wisdom is humility, so. Pull this one. Do I want to pull that shoulder back? Maybe I... Maybe I just need to make the bow bigger. Actually, I think I can I can just scale it, can't I? Let's see what happens. Scale. Scale. Um, let's see. Oh, I'm solved. Kind of. Okay. Got an arrow. He really wants to smell the feather on that arrow. Fair enough. It's probably uh, vanilla scented. Uh, okay. This hand needs to be moved down. And I can move it by rotating the sky. Let's try this guy. Definitely feeling more natural. Um, this hand isn't quite where it needs to be yet, but feel like we're getting close. Yeah, man, if you want preaching, you should check out my blog. I've got probably 20 novels worth of blog. You want lots of my wisdom, that's the place to go. So I want I want this shoulder to come. No, I don't. It just Okay, I'm just gonna make this uh, bow bigger yet again. I'm not worried about getting super fiddly to make sure all the fingers fit perfectly since I'm going to be hand drawing over this regardless. Um, unless I find some incredible shader that like lets it match my other sketching stuff. Which would be awesome. I'll definitely research that. Because if I could just spit it straight from this into Photoshop, that would save even more and more time. But, I mean, no matter what, there's got to be, like, draw a little word to, to customize his outfit and, and, you know, facial features, etc., etc. So it's not like you could just come raw out of here. Uh, anyway, yeah, this is looking um, 
Like if his head was turned a bit, uh, this looks pretty close to what I need. Yeah, I sure wish I could rotate that head a bit. Oh, here's sliders down here too. That's cool. Yeah, see, it's, it maxes out at 22 degrees. Burn. It's like, sorry, that's all a head should rotate. Let's click here to toggle the locked state of this property. Okay, now it can't be. Okay, I was hoping maybe there'd be a way to unlock it. Click here to toggle whether this property overrides any controllers. Also not what I was hoping. Click here to favorite the state of this property. Uh, let's see if there's a menu for parameter settings. Can I, can I overwrite it there? Ah, min and max, here we go. Uh, let's set the max to 45 degrees. Don't use limits, no limits. All right, now let's see what happens. Uh, uh. I figured out a thing, you guys! I did it! I figured out a thing in software. This is this is a miracle. Look at that. His neck doesn't look broken at all. Well, it looks a little funky there, but e easy to fix. That's amazing. I can't believe I did a thing. At 42, I think this is the first time I ever just, like, I had a problem. I knew how to solve it. I didn't know how to solve it, I knew what the problem was, I was able to articulate it, and I was able to find a feature in the software to do it. Wow! Wow! Okay, real quick, uh, to celebrate that victory, I'm going to fail at importing something real quick, and then we'll be done. Uh, Damon, yeah! You're gonna be my hype man for me? Uh, I think I hype man myself pretty well there. Okay, uh, import. Here we go. Uh, Tales from Telefar, please. Illustrations, common. Mulig.obj. Alright, what are our options here? Uh, don't care about UVs. Don't care about groups. I don't know what surfaces means in this case. I don't want a material library. Uh, okay, when I when I brought the bow in, I don't know why it wants to scale it at 24,384%. How about just 100? Like, how about just leave it the way it is? What, you know? Okay. Here we go. Um, I assume put it somewhere, it might be super gigantic, it might be super tiny. For some reason I have a head bone, so I Tiny. Okay. There we go. Is it super tiny? Oh, it's super tiny. Okay. Scale. Um, all together now. Yes. Very cool. Type in a number. Yes, I can. Uh, 1200. Okay. Close. Let's try 6000. Boom! Probably needs to go up a little bit more. It's cool that way. Uh, well, it's probably a little warmer now that you went out there and dissipated your body heat. <laughs> You know, it's, that's just, I think it's even, I wonder, oh. keep it even out. Okay. Woo! Okay. There we go. Uh, I don't know why neither of these boys are on the ground like they should be. Put Mr. Mulig on the ground now. Oh, 
wonder if there's a way to make a ground plane. I suppose I could import one, but I'm sure there's just a button that will just put a ground there. I'll figure that out later. Uh, let's see. Can we take you and move all of you, or will... Oh, okay. I'm sure I could have parented the bow to Bowmark so that it would move with me. But for now, this will do. Right. shooting poor Mr. Mulig. Cool, cool, cool. I think uh, got, we've got the beginnings of an illustration happening here. One of, the, one of the coolest things about mocking it up in 3D first is playing with the camera position and the composition um, and how, having the control. I mean, okay, so a person who's good at 2D art has this all like tracked out in their head to begin with. And so when they block their stuff in, it just works. It doesn't work for me. So in, in my case, like if I was, if I was gonna say say this is the this is the drawing that I want to do right this would be really bad because you have this this bow line like just barely touching the neck there and the arrow stopping it so, so that the Mulig's silhouette blocks all the cool stuff there so I could solve that by you know lowering the Mulig's head or rotating the camera a bit so that you know sticks out more blah blah blah. anyway uh, we'll, get, we'll get to that uh, once we get all the elements in I think I'll probably continue with it this weekend um, I'll probably have some more stuff hopefully I'll get the little the cart on his back and maybe a little scola stand in and a, and a monster I think I might actually start sculpting the monster from scratch in ZBrush uh, for the next stream just because that's a fun thing to do um, yeah so uh, yes. Yes, Dottie, I did it. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for joining me and uh, for being here with uh, this momentous victory that I just had. Um, and, uh, you know, maybe next time there'll be another victory. I, I doubt it could ever top what just happened here today. But um, if it does... Uh, Maybe I'm becoming a professional or something. I don't know. I don't know. Something's happening. So, uh, yeah. Well, I'll see you guys all next time. Uh, I'm not going to plug anything because I didn't plan for it. And every time I try to plug something at the end, it's awkward and weird. So I'm going to remember to do uh, to plan it next time. I'm just kidding. I won't. Okay. Bye, guys.